Good morning. Good morning. It's 11 degrees Celsius, 52 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a beautiful, clear, perfect morning here in the 3.5 million hectare wilderness wonderland that is the Greater Limpopo Transfrontier Park. And we're on a small 1,500 hectare piece, uh, pretty much in the middle of it. And we're going to try and find some of the delights that this wilderness has to offer this morning. Uh, my name is James Hendry. On camera today, we've got Phil. Hello, Phil. Phil is a uh, trussed up his knee. He broke it playing some touch rugby the other day, which is a little sad, but he'll survive. In the control room, we have Tara, and Eugene is frantically trying to fix Wendy with his screwdrivers, computers, and various other things that um, basically look like a toolbox from the dark arts. So we're thankful for his efforts. And then also uh, back at camp and in bed is Andrew and Brent as they wait for a bit of light and then they'll come and help us track dependent on Wendy's progress. Please remember we love your comments, we love your questions, we love everything you have to say to us. Well, most of the time. Hashtag Safari Live if you're uh, modern enough to be on Twitter. Uh, questions at wildearth.tv if you're on the email. Uh, don't bother to send us any handwritten notes. The South African Post Office has been on strike for the last eight months. Um, thank you very much, especially to the Zoomies who tracked Mvula coming across the Gari Dam wall last night. I think it was about 8.30. Um, you make a real contribution to, to our, our operation and help us a huge amount. And you probably don't realize that, that you make a fairly large contribution to African wildlife conservation as well through your showcasing of the wonders that we have out here. So a special shout out and a thanks to you. Um, our plan this morning is to head out towards uh, the Aratuza side of things. Um, that's a, the western sector for anybody who is uh, new to us. Um, and we're going to see what we can find there. Um, Imvula, for those who don't know, is a male leopard about 10 years old who we tracked yesterday. We had very free, fortunate... Have that, excuse me, it's cold. My lips are cold. We were very fortunate to have him for both game drives yesterday, which was just wonderful. Um, so we're going to head off to Arathusa. He was heading in a westerly direction. We're probably going to let Brent try and follow up on him, and we're going to see what else has come across to Arathusa. I'm really hoping that we might have some sort of wild dog interaction. Um, I know that the packs in the area are starting to den, uh, and it would just be very special to be able to find some of them um, on the hunt, as it were, waiting to feed their babies. Right, so... Contributions, keep them flowing. Uh, at the moment, you've got my ugly mug for the next three hours. Uh, maybe we'll be lucky with and see Brent's uh, model-esque face during some time during the morning. But otherwise, it's you and me. Here we go. We're now on the southern boundary, just about. Then we're going to head west uh, and go terra incognito. So you can see now we find ourselves on the southern boundary. Sorry, yeah. I think I just saw termite mound, but just in case it's not. It is a termite mound. We're going to drive pretty slowly in these low light conditions so that we don't miss any tracks that may or may not be crossing the road. It always represents the, um, the sort of story of what went on in the night. So, so far today we've seen quite a few hyena tracks. They like to be active mainly at night. A few civet tracks.
buffalo also grazing during the cold. just see I'm not sure yeah the camera is picking it up at the end of the road there you can see the mist that is forming in the little depressions and valleys on this chilly day not the coldest morning we've had uh, we had a I think it went down to four degrees at one stage which for us is appalling You can see the mist still on the road just in front of us. It's a lovely feeling go driving through it. Very fresh. Slightly eerie. Oh. Well I wonder if we can get those. Um, nothing 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 that's gonna run away from us. There's some beautiful spiders' webs just caught there in the morning mist. You see them there, Phil? It's really going to be worth trying to have a look at them, everyone. So, we'll just zoom in there. These are the nests of the tropical tent web spider. Um, the light is very tricky, so I'll be most impressed at the full moment. There we go. He's got them. There they go. Lovely. Beautiful. Well done. That's a tropical tent web spider and uh, unlike an orb web spider which is the traditional spider that you think of when uh, you feel terrified um, that will put a sort of uh, I suppose the easiest way to describe it is the type of web that spider-man might build um, that will catch an insect flying uh, at a sort of horizontal angle to it those webs are used a sort of like a net like a, a trapeze artist's net and any insect that flies past it will probably be hit by those knockdown threads which you can see those those are the ones sort of coming up from the in a conical fashion from the net and the insect will fall or whatever it is will fall into that net and be devoured by the spider It's quite interesting. A lot of um, a spider kills its prey um, not so much with with the venom. Well, it does kill it with the venom, but the venom is not um, necessarily a yeah. for killing itself. It's actually a digestive enzyme. So a lot of the spiders will bite what they eat, and the insides of the hapless insect that's been caught will be uh, sort of liquefied within its exoskeleton and that's why you see spiders uh, they trust they bite their prey trust them up and then leave them and that's for the enzymes to work and then they'll come back to that sort of hard exoskeleton make a hole and suck out the insides a bit later it's, it's rather grim for this time of the morning but at least they make very beautiful nests everyone's got to eat Bugsy on Twitter. Good morning and welcome. Um, you'd like to know why the vehicle is vibrating. Uh, the roads are fairly uneven and so we have to sort of make do as best we can. It's two ring neck doves flying off in front of us. Um, so we try and drive as smoothly as possible um, but sometimes the corrugations in the road uh, make it difficult. We've tried all sorts of different camera mounts and we're continuing to try different things um, but it's very difficult to try and create something that will remain sort of totally smooth so Bugsy sorry about that we'll try and be as smooth as possible
Ahe! Si fa mangiare! Si fa un bagazzo! Eh, eh, non ti sa che è un buon in amonza! Eh, a me come anche un chum! Loto! Ok, alright, tanto ne aratuso! Yeah, io ho ancora in quelle! Ok, qui! Ah, festo un me! Ok, can see le gove! Alright, mi fa me gatti! Ok, enjoy your drive everyone! Sorry everybody to, um, to uh, uh, ignore you slightly there, I was just getting a bit of an update. Um, apparently there is a leopard on Arethusa and we've just moved on to Arethusa. So we'll see if we can get an update there and go that way. Bugsy, I'm afraid this little road is going to be a little bumpy for the next few minutes, um, but then you should be alright. have a quick look at these Impala. Hello Claire in New York. Um, you ask a very nice question. Thank you for it. Um, you say, you, or you make mention of the fact that I have discussed um, the innate fear that animals have of us when we're on foot. And they do, they do indeed have that during the day. And you want to know, is it the same at night? The answer is not really. It's a very good question. Um, I would... In this area, fairly happily view a pride of lions on foot during the day. At night, I certainly wouldn't want to do that. They definitely develop confidence at night. That's their sort of time. Um, lion, especially leopard. Mm, look, there are incidents of leopards um, uh, killing people. They're, they're not that... Uh, they're fairly few and far between, and normally it's an old or sick individual, but often that is at night. So, I mean, I have seen leopard at night uh, by mistake on foot uh, in camp and they do normally just, just sort of walk away or run off, slink off into the bush. But certainly there's a different, very different element at night. Excellent question. Thanks, Claire. All right, let us push on from these unconfiding impala hiding behind some Strychnos madagascarensis trees. Will you excuse me for one second? I'm just going to see if I can get an update on that leopard that they've seen there. Any station in the West Coast is a copy. So far, no luck. Any station there? Any station there, do the decoding. Any station there, do the decoding. Good morning, morning. Um, can you give me an update for the West today? Sorry, can you just go with that again? I lost you. Puppy, thanks. Do you know if that's within our traversing area? Puppy, thanks. Is that within our traversing area? Puppy, I'd like to make my way there if I can. Is there space? No rush at all. Um, just will you just keep me posted, please? Thanks very much. 
now that update everybody apparently uh, Tingana has been found um, there is quite a lot of activity around him at the moment so we can't go there straight away um, which is quite a good thing I think I don't want to be there when there's too many too, too many people um, but what is interesting is that he um, he I want to compare him with Mbula uh, there appears to be some form of territorial dispute between them and I would really like to to be able to see the difference so please excuse me if I suddenly if I suddenly disappear from you it's because the radio is starting to talk in me ear I'm not great at multitasking Hello Sandy in Indiana, lovely question here, I'm just going to stop and we'll look at these uh, long-tailed shrike while I answer it. Um, Sandy, you want to know about the, um, the tarantula and spiders that are similar here, and I'm glad that you described the tarantula as beautiful because it is a beautiful spider. Um, we have something similar here, and it's called uh, the baboon spider. Now, the baboon spider looks very similar to a tarantula um, and very similar sort of strategies, I think, um, but they don't have those. Um, I think the tarantula, if I'm not mistaken, in North America has got a uh, sort of shoots out its hairs as a defense as, a, and, as well as the bite. Um, our baboon spiders tend to be, they can give you a nip, but they're not particularly poisonous. They look very similar to a tarantula, but you can happily have them walking on your hand and uh, around your body if you're not arachnophobic. If you are arachnophobic, a baboon spider will probably cause you a heart attack. Right, great question. Nice to hear somebody describe a spider as beautiful. Very misty morning now. Here comes the sun. Hello, dance anyway. You want some clarification on my my leopard answer there? Um, eh. Sorry, just excuse me one second. Last station, do you call in? Hey, affirmative. Copy. Is there a space there? No problem, thanks, no rush. I'm dancing. Dance anyway. Um, so, you wanted to know if, um, the, when I referred to an old leopard, or an, um, the possibility of a leopard attacking somebody, was I referring to the age of the leopard or the person? Um, both, actually. Um, what I did mean was that an older or sickly leopard um, will most likely is would be the kind of leopard that might attack a human being. Um, but also, I mean, they will also pick up age and health um, of any human victim or any victim.
right. Now there's a, lot, a huge amount of activity around that leopard. So we're going to try and stay away from him for now, but we'll go there a little bit later. Hello, Anna Marie. Um, you're speculating on uh, Mvula's injury and how he got it. Um, and perhaps you say it was a territorial dispute with Tingana. Um, having heard the leopards calling around here and having seen uh, the sort of spaces in which they move, I mean, I haven't been here for very long, I would say that that's a pretty, pretty good uh, supposition. Uh, that would be my, my, my guess. Um, he's obviously taken a swipe to the, fa to the face and so if it was a, a lion or something like that I think the injury would have been a lot worse um, but a leopard also he would have been facing forward having a fight with him so that's quite well possible the other thing that we haven't considered of course or perhaps you have but, but I've just thought of um, is that he could have this is Mbula he and for those of you who don't know he's got a very injured eye um, he could have been, it could have happened on the hunt. I mean, he may have been uh, chasing something and caught by a twig or a log. I mean, I've often snagged various bits of my body of walking through the bush here. And the speed with which a leopard uh, attacks, it's well possible that that could have been what happened. Now, I do need to consult the map a little bit because we're here on Arathusa which is terra incognito to most of us. Um, but we seem to be heading in the correct direction, which is good news. All right, this is the Arathusa Airstrip, Arathusa International, Airstrip, uh, International Airport. Let's make sure that no A380s are landing. I'm just going to stop here and have a listen to what we can hear. Oh, there's a lovely Swainson's Franklin there, Thor. Now running down the airstrip at roughly the same speed as the Concorde. And you can see the, the mist. And the sun's just coming up behind us. Lovely dawn chorus going on. Go ahead. Okay, copy, thanks. No idea. So I'm just going to warn you quite carefully while we watch the sun coming up that the Tingana is right at the very edge of the area we're allowed to traverse. So if he does go any further west, we're going to be looking for other things, I'm afraid. So this beautiful morning, I just want to tell you what I can hear. Here, um, virtual starlings were calling. Uh, crowned lapwing, that's the one you can hear off to the left. Another one off to the right. They get very upset. They live in these clearings where they lay their nests in little hollow depressions on the ground. starting to call now because the sun has just popped up. And that's a virtual starling you can see flying through the frame there. They'll fly up and down looking for different bits of little invertebrates and insects and things 
lapping around the place here. Beautiful shot of that starling. It's just a lovely, lovely morning to sit and contemplate life. And I'm just c continuing to consult the map figure out the best way to get to this to the leopard sighting. There you can hear it Franklin calling off. Right. Um, Wesley, I believe you have a question about spiders and that there's a bit of a spider theme developing, which is quite exciting. So we'll try and find some more spiders. I'm afraid, Wesley, I didn't quite hear your question. It'll come through again just now, and then I will answer it for you as soon as I can. Um, well, and we'll try and find some other examples of spiders. Obviously, um, winter time is not the best time to be finding spiders. But you've seen how many beautiful uh, tent web spiders there are around the place. So we'll see what we can find. I'm just being called by the person with the leopard. Go ahead. Copy, thanks. I'll make my way there now. Right, there is some space for us. So we're going to drive. Okay, copy. We'll, we'll come as quick as we can. He is... He is heading in a westerly direction, so I'm going to drive relatively quickly and I'm going to be using some GPS tracking. Um, oh, we've got some elephants. Eesh. Now, do we go for quickly? We'll have a quick poll. Do we go for the elephants or do we go for the leopard? Of course, this is highly illegal to be driving down the, down the airstrip. Sorry, confirm he's crossed west. Okay, copy, thanks. We're on our way. Okay, if he does cross, it's no problem. Just keep him close. Did you see the elephants there? That is magnificent. I think we're probably going to go for the leopard. Um, but it looks like he might cross west. Go ahead. I'm sorry, I'm not copying. I'm at the earth is this. I think um, unless anybody objects, we're going to go quickly to try and find the leopard. All right, and then we'll try and come back and find these beautiful elephants. I don't want to reject them, but I really want to see Tingana and compare him with Mbula from yesterday. Right, hold on. Phil, take a dentures out. Here we go. Big bump here. 
Bugsy, don't spill your coffee. Oh, it's chilly to be driving at this speed. about the speed. Sorry about the speed everybody, um, but if we want to see the leopard, then we need to drive a little bit quicker because he is heading west. past Arathusa Safari Lodge as we speak. Oh, sorry about that. Big bump. About 700 different roads out here, so... Whoa, 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 sorry about that. Hold on, hold on. All right, on we go. Uh, okay. Sorry, I keep having to look. I've got a little GPS tracker. Um, which is telling us where we are. Don't really need it on Juma, but this far to the west we do. We don't often come this far west. Thank goodness for technology. Beautiful misty morning, it really is spectacular. Some nyalas, which we're not going to pan to. So we try to negotiate these roads. get on to the next main road. Hello, Gerry van der Waal. Yes, we are in a bit of a safari Ferrari. Um, although I think the makers in Maranello would be slightly ashamed at the speeds that this Land Rover is able to uh, to, uh, to achieve. But we are, yes, we're going as fast as this, this, as the Land Rover and the roads will allow, and fills dentures.
some chat about the mist going on. Uh, it's <laughs> it's exactly what I think. Um, you're talking about it being fairy mist, and that we drive towards it, and never seem to go into it. It's exactly what it feels like. that mist up ahead of us there. Well, you can't actually see it, it looks like sky to you, but to, to us there's a huge little, a huge belt of mist in the valley in front. It's gorgeous. And the smell as we drive through this beautiful area is just spectacular. Right. We turn here. I wish you could smell it. The the, beauty, the the smells of the bush out here are just so spectacular. just so, so fresh. I hope it's worth it and I hope we haven't neglected those elephants for no reason. He's moving north, so he's moving away from us. Uh, and we do manage to get there. Um, and so far he's still on the right property, which is good news. And he has taken a few steps further to the east, which is what we want him to do. Through the drainage line. He's in this drainage line system but quite a lot further north of where we are now. Now, I don't want to make a mistake. Okay. That bigger depression you can see on our right hand side is a naturally forming pan. And that happens when uh, it starts off with a warthog maybe uh, in a puddle. Um, and then maybe a family of warthogs and then maybe a buffalo comes and digs for a while and after the buffalo then maybe a rhino comes and eventually because the soil there is so clay rich um, it becomes a huge wallow which in the summer months will provide water and mud for the animals that love it. And I must tell you at this stage that my hands are in a state of abject frozenness. I feel like I have, I may get frostbite. But as long as I show you the leopard, it'll be worth it. might have frozen stiff on the back. There's very little movement from him. Might have to park him in the sun for a couple of minutes. Okay, we're getting closer now. Now 
line. This drainage line that you're probably seeing every so often on the left hand side is um, is where he's, he's walking parallel with it. And that drainage line is our western boundary so we can't go across that. So I'm hoping he will not do the same. getting close which is a good thing the hands are cold my nose is frozen my lips are soon going to stop being able to speak I'm on Saffron. We are getting very close. Um, he's still on the area where we are trying to traverse, so that's pretty good news. I do hope this will be worth it. I'm just so excited to compare him with them bullets. Unusual that to be able to compare two male leopards like this. Uh, right. Fortunately, the person who built these roads also put little mountains on them. Uh, not exactly smooth for high-speed leopard chases. Here we go. Here we go. We are in the right place. There's another vehicle. Is he in there? I've got no clue actually. Okay. Either. All right, thanks. I'm gonna check. Sean, I'm at junction. Um, with second windmill in Saffron. Okay, I'm just going to be quiet. We're just going to turn off and listen here. Okay, he's just in here. I can hear the vehicles just through there to the left. We're going to try and make our way in there. Charge it in Ghana side. Okay, copy that, we'll do. Right, hold on tight.
Put your hands there, Phil. the vehicle in front. Unfortunately I have managed to log just that is not a nice sound to hear. I'm trying to drive a car. <laughs> Hopefully my bosses ain't watching. They have lost sight of him, but we'll keep trying. We're going to try and see if we can get in there. Luckily for us, our little car is a little bit more nimble than some of the others. So we'll follow these other vehicles and see. The, the panic is over. I'm not sure if we're going to see him. I know they have lost him, but with any luck we will. Quite a few little drainage lines and things in here which make it a bit difficult. to know that Phil is still on the back. He's starting to thaw. He's getting his zooming fingers ready. And yeah, they found him again. Right, he's just up ahead. He's just up ahead. right here Phil somewhere see the other there he is you got him <laughs> okay, we're gonna stop here and just get a quick sight of him oh, isn't that wonderful isn't that gorgeous there he is Oh, that was worth it. That was worth the freezing fingers and freezing nose. Wonderful. So exciting. There he comes. Just let him cross here. Isn't that lovely? Oh, that's beautiful. So we'll probably have to backlight him for a little while before I can get around him. But I hope you all feel like that was worth it. Drive slowly up next to him here. Yeah? Don't make too much noise, but very difficult not to make noise, obviously. You're driving through the bush. Now, let's try and compare him with Mola. I think he looks, yeah, he's probably a similar size, maybe a little bit bigger. Just until you're going to put him in the street. There. There. Oh. Oh. 
bit of a Ferrari operation going. Yeah. going on underneath this vehicle which is not entirely savoury. Thank you Blair for your update about the size of the vehicles. Um, you, you say that they are a similar size which would uh, no, I think you're probably right. Something stuck under this car. I might have to I might have to get up and get up. We're just going to wait and see what's going on here. There seems to be quite a lot of confusion, and I don't want to add to it. What would like? Bill is just having a quick look under the car to see if he can see anything. Can you see anything? Just stick on the what? Oh, okay. So we'll probably just deal with this. Thing. Right, please excuse me one second. I have to pull the stick up, otherwise the car's not going to go anywhere. Shout if you see a leopard coming up behind me. Here is the off offending piece of vegetation, now attached, of course, irrev irrevocably to my hair piece. Right, on, <laughs> on, on we go. <laughs> well, at least we got one view of him. I hope we'll get another one. All right, here we go. and see where the vehicle went. Oh, where did that other car go? Out the back there. Okay. Right. Hold on tight again, everyone. and listen and see if I can hear them. Okay, I can see them through there. might go into a clearing which would be lovely. Um, no, it's getting very thick in here I'm afraid. But we'll do what we can. Watch out there fool. Here. 
damage. I want to destroy that beautiful spider's web there. Still an active one. Now everybody, I'm not sure we're going to get through here. I'm, I'm just going to have a listen again. They're not too far away. Fortunately, that stick did hamper us slightly. So we'll push gently through here. You can see them off to our left hand side. Still can see them. Hello Gloria. Gloria, thank you for your question. You want to know who do I think is bigger of the two leopards? Um, just watch your head here, Phil. Um, I think uh, the consensus, uh, as explained by Blair, seems to be that Tingane is slightly bigger than that they are a very similar size. And I would tend to agree with that. Now we're getting, we seem to be getting a bit closer here. Yeah. We got him. Okay. Phil can see him. So we're just going to get a bit closer. Okay, look at the base of that ant hill on the right. Okay. Oh, yes, well spotted, Phil. Up ahead here. Can you see him? He's him going to come around here. Then. He's going to come around this termite mound. Um, Raisa, you want to know about him and the Anderson male and how far into his territory the Anderson male has come. Now, I have yet to see this fabled and tail, um, and I don't know how far he is coming. I can see his tail, and it's full spotted. So, we spotted his tail there he is. You can see him beautifully now. Well, I'm not going to go too much further. I think it's a bit too much further. See if you can get a shot there. Um, Raisa, I don't. So, if you could uh, perhaps do a bit of research, you leopard experts there on, on the World Wide Web. Um, I'd be fascinated to know how far in he could get. And it is just so nice to, to settle down and sit for a while and listen in the silence of wonderful hours. It's just great how silent the bush is when we turn the engines off. I just want you to try and listen and see what you can hear um, after that rather hairy chase that we did. I think he is going to move again. I'm not sure if you heard that that was a vulture flying over, just taking off. Can you still see him, Phil? Just on the other side of the green bush. I'm not going to move at this stage. We're just going to see if he doesn't come out. It's so nice to have the, all, everything silent.
All right, I'm going to move a bit now. Phil, ready? Okay. We'll just sneak forward first and then a little bit back. I think we're going to have to get back. I'm just getting a bit stuck here. There is coming up. Um, some questions about the fathering of cubs. I think um, of Shadow's cub, perhaps. Uh, Cindida. I'm not sure who the father is. Um, I guess I've only been here three weeks, and I'd love to know from anybody, um, anybody on the on the Twitterverse who perhaps has has more intel. Um, so you can probably tell. We can get a probability on who is the most likely candidate to be the the father um, by the territories. But females do go out of their territories for mating, and sometimes we don't see that, and, and so sometimes. What we, th the f who we think the father isn't in fact, um, but it's most likely that uh, the. I'm sure that you have seen Karula mating. I think with Tingana, um, and so it's quite likely that uh, Karula mating with Tingana and Shadow mating with Tingana. So it's quite likely that uh, Shadow's cub Sindila is this leopard's son, uh, but could be Mvulas, could even be the Anderson males. We'll try and move now and get us into a better position because that's not a great picture. Stuck here, everyone. Okay, hold on, everybody. We'll get there eventually. Um, Ramey, a lovely question from you. Apparently, Sundana is a something of an, an artfark specialist, so he likes to kill uh, artfark or ant bear. And And you wanted to know if perhaps he's not waiting for one in the termite farm. He may well be. I must say, it's very unusual that he's become such a specialist, but I'd really love to see that. There's a beautiful shot coming up, I hope. He stays where he is now. How's that for you? So he's just over there. And he's he's just he's just looked up because a vulture flew over his head. They will track vultures and just watch carefully where the vultures go. Um, in case there's an opportunity to do a bit of scavenging and also because they know that lions will follow vultures they need to be very careful of everything that's going on it's quite interesting i mean isn't that a beautiful shot while i waffle on at you quintessential cat shot it's quite interesting i've always found that with lions they're prepared to lie down and that noise is uh, some Egyptian geese flying over overhead. I've always found with lions that they will lie as if dead.
and with with leopards they will sleep but they every few seconds every half a minute or so they will lift their heads up and have a look around they can't afford to be nearly as sleepy as a lion's can Hello, Gilly from Wisconsin. Lovely question again. I'm, I'm really enjoying this comparison of the two, two male leopards we've seen in the last two days. You say he looks more robust um, than Tingana, perhaps. And apparently he's supposed to be nine and Tingana's supposed to be ten, at least the other way around. Tingana's supposed to be nine and Mvula's supposed to be ten. Now, as I, oh, I agree, Gilly, I think he does look more robust than Mvula. Mvula, to me, looks very old for a 10-year-old. Uh, this, this looks like a 9-year-old leopard to me, and I would have said that Mvula was um, maybe because of the, you know, the, the amount of uh, trouble he's had, sort of with his eye and his ears are a lot more moth-eaten, which makes him look a bit older. Uh, but I would have said that this leopard is, I would have said he was quite a lot younger. But, I mean, I may well be wrong. And I think he does look a bit more robust, a little bit more stocky. You know, he's got a bit more muscle mass than Mvula does. And that would be borne out by the fact that Mvula seems to be struggling to hold his territory at the moment. Hello, Jennifer. Another lovely question. You'd like to know, um, can we see, you saw him in 2013 um, with a big uh, puncture wound on the, apparently the left side of his face. Um, and it was very swollen to the extent that you could barely identify him. Um, and you want to know if it's healed. Well, well, no, you want to know if there's a scar. I'm sure there is. Whether I can see it or not, I don't know. Oh, that's wonderful. I'll just get my powerful binoculars out. They're of the same vintage as Field Marshal Montgomery. I can't see any obvious scarring. I'm sure if we got close enough to tickle him under his eyes, though, we'd be able to see it. But he's obviously, I mean, their ability to heal is quite phenomenal. I can see a slight scratch there under the left eye. That could be the scar. Remember the swelling? The swelling that he would have received is probably due to an, a bacterial infection from whatever bite he had. Here he goes. He's going to sit very still. This is so special. Just look at his dewlap. A dewlap is that flap of skin just behind his jaw. Now, when I was watching Mvula, I didn't notice that he had a decent dewlap like that. worth the drive, wasn't it? Right, 
Now, just need to make sure we're not disappearing off the property. Mistake. Come on, <laughs> Just making sure that we haven't crossed the boundary. No, we're okay. We're all right. Okay, there is a, a vulture there in the tree. That's his nest. And that's what we disturbed him, obviously, when we came out here. Um, let's carry on and try and find the leopard. We'll just have a quick look at that vulture. And then he was flying around as soon as he saw... Tingana stop here, he started flying about, but he settled again. Right, so let's see if we can catch up with Tingana. Right, we go gently through here. Now, this is just really worthwhile while we following it's a beautiful shot of the full tail drongo i thought he might do that sorry i set full up a bit there right Let's see if we can't get another view of that magnificent animal moving too fast which is nice it seems to be going from termite mound to termite mound which um, as was pointed out to everybody um, as seems his want he's probably looking for for artvok or ant bear a bit of a bump here hold on and spill your coffee or your evening snifter. Wherever you might find yourself in the world. If you've just joined us, we are hot on the trail of a magnificent male leopard. And if you're a new viewer, he's just in front of us there, Phil. You can see his tail walking through the bush there. Um, and if you've just joined us and you'd like to ask any questions at all, please send them on the Twitter handle, hashtag Safari Live, or questions at wildearth.tv if you're on the email. Uh, I'm just trying to figure the best route here. making his way along the drainage line. And it's not the easiest place to be driving around, but we are in the Land Rover Defender 90. So if any vehicle can get here, this one can. This is going to be a slightly tricky bit here. If we get stuck, I apologize in advance. Go. Oh, gently done.
Da oben alle. Termite man to termite man as predicted. Try and get a slight if you got him. Mm -hmm. Come back. Okay, stop. So we'll just, before we settle too much, let's just see where he's going to go. Now look, there's a bird alarm calling, exactly what Mwula did yesterday. The bird alarm calls and he flicks that little white tip to the tail up. It's fascinating to see. Yeah, we're going to have to go back wild. Hello, Wesley and Durban. Um, you'd like to know that if a vulture is uh, if a vulture is uh, circling in the sky, does it always mean that there's a kill? Um, the answer is no. Uh, just like happened just now, that vulture flew because he got a fright from the cars and from the leopard. So he wasn't, that was his nest or her nest. Um, the other thing that people make a mistake with is when it gets a bit warmer. So normally around half past eight, nine o'clock on a winter's day, the air starts to warm and the so the thermals start to rise and then the vultures take off um, and th they need that hot air to rise and so they all generally do it at the same time and they follow each other to the thermals and fly up together and often that's mistaken for them looking for a kill uh, when they aren't actually this <laughs> there's a drongo following us and he's he's following us like he would follow a herd of elephants you know, the elephants kick up the invertebrates and the drongos follow them and we're doing the same with our driving through the bush here. He is just up ahead. Hello Chuck, nice question. I'm just going to stop here while we wait for um, that other ranger to get through that thick stuff there. This drongo is right next to us. You were asking about termite mounds and all the termite mounds that he's uh, looking at. Isn't that a wonderful shot, drongo? <laughs> you wanted to know, are those termite mounds active with termites? Um, and the answer is uh, some of them and some of them not. The second one, absolutely, definitely. And the third one, I'm not so sure. Um, you need to be able to have a bit of a closer look than we have there. Now watch your head here, Phil. Tamburti tree. I don't want to be stabbed by that wood. A little toxic that it is. You through there? Phil's alive. And a crucial part of all this is Phil. Out him, no picture. Likewise, Eugene and Tara in the back rooms, controlling things. Sorry, everybody, we will try and get another view. Oh, look. Oh, hello, Kay in Wisconsin, while I extricate myself from this forest, Nice question, really nice about the, the mist and it's gathering on the leaves. 
and whether animals or birds and insects take advantage of that gathered dew. Um, I haven't seen it happen here, but I imagine that it does. You know, there's a fairly water-stressed area. I mean, and certainly in uh, different parts of Namibia, um, it does happen. I've picked up another branch. Um, certainly on the dunes in Namibia, and there are beetles that have specialized for that sort of thing. And so I imagine there are certainly um, various types of insects that would do it here. Sorry, I have lost sight of this leopard for now. We have had a great view. There's another termite mound just up ahead, and I wonder if he isn't heading there. alarm calling behind us. Okay, uh, what we're going to try and do is get one more view of him. Um, I'm just going to go towards those impala um, and if we miss, if we don't see him again, I think we've got a great view and we'll see if we can't go and find those elephants again, which might be quite fun. Um, we don't want to bash through too much more bush. sit on him we can't even see his forked tail and there it is this is the same bird that's been following us for the last maybe 10 minutes for us to move on so that he can follow in our wake and pick up some um, some insects and other invertebrates that we might kick up. I 
I can't believe he hasn't flown away. We tried this twice before. see the little tooth on the end of his beak there and that's that he will use to sort of s spear or help him grip the invertebrates that he might find special he's calling can you hear that another one calling just off behind us the side you can hear some green wood hoopoos calling oh isn't that wonderful that is a just wonderful wonderful shot thanks everyone um thank you well done full great job um debbie you've made the comment that it looked like he had whiskers and they do they do have little sort of whiskery type things and those are to help, um, when they're flying and trying to catch insects, it's to help sort of knock the insects into the, into the mouth. It's like a little net almost. Okay, that, it seems to me that the leopard has gone um, stationary just ahead of us. I think he stopped moving. You know, just drive out that way, and if we're lucky, we'll see him again. And if not, we'll head towards where we saw those elephants earlier. Let's see what we can see. What a great morning. Thank you for your comment. I think the Drongo did want his five minutes of fame. A little bit more than that in the end. Well deserved it is too. Thanks for that. Of course, I have to try and extricate myself from this some stage. 